Hello, McDude here, and um, what you're watching is um, a series of bomb intercepts, to be exact, five bomb intercepts from uh, uh, games that were played last January. I'm still cleaning out my hard drive. I'm, I'm very close to being done. Um, this particular game is on the uh, Two Cities map, or Twin Cities, whatever they call it. Um, anyway. Um, I'm in the process of intercepting a Royal Air Force Wellington, uh, which are very difficult aircraft to fly, um, and um, but a lot easier to intercept. <laughs> uh, fortunately, um, uh, my flight control maneuvers at the time was the uh, Logitech Attack 3 joystick and the Satec. Uh, the, Whatever they call it, uh, rudder pedals. Um, move in here. It's a very textbook intercept. It's very simple. Take a couple of shots. Boom! Nail its wing. And, um, well, they don't get too much simpler than that. Um, next up is. The intercept of a Soviet IL-4 bomber. Um, there are no Year Twos in this um, in this series. I know people back in January, and again, this video, these videos were shot back in January. Well, games were played back in January. Um, back when people were going bonkers over the so-called Year Two threat, I didn't see that many Year Twos. I didn't see a lot of base rushing. I was playing a lot of games. This is a bad intercept. Um, dude's got a total lead on me. But anyway, um, I didn't really see that many U2s or base rushing or any of that stuff. Um, but um, but nonetheless, you know, I, uh, I did go on anti-bomber patrol because I thought it was fun and as a bomber pilot I thought I was uniquely qualified to go out and gun for bombers um, here you see me trying to get the beat on them from a distance and boom um, I, I cut his wing off from a, a, a ways back I find the KI-45 to be probably the best bomb interceptor out there. It's, you, you really, if you want to go shoot down bombers, you're not going to get too much better than the, the Japanese series of KI-45s. I think it's a KI-109, but uh, you're not going to get too much better than, than that series of bomber interceptors. They're, they're just outstanding um, interceptors. Now, in this next intercept, um, this is actually the most complicated, but it's the hardest intercept I've ever had. Um, I'm closing in on a G4M1 uh, Japanese bomber. Uh, the Allied codename was Betty, and I'm, gonna, I'm just going to call it that for the rest of the game. Um, the the bay was flown by an, an outstanding pilot. Um, here you see him fending off uh, a tail attack. You see me pull off a rather well bad attack. I I was not my best throughout this game, um, but I I pull around. I, uh, I take a couple of shots at him. Now, what was interesting about this was the Betty. The Betty wasn't alone. Um, there was an SM seventy nine um, Sparviet uh, or a Sparrowhawk that, um, uh, uh, that that followed him along. You just probably saw him in my lower left corner. Um, that Sparrowhawk. And you see him, you see the Sparrowhawk right up alongside the Betty right there. 
Um, he's providing mutual support. He just swung at me. Now, the Sparrowhawk has a forward-firing um, 50 caliber machine gun. And um, he actually unloaded that on me, but he missed. Um, here I got my power. Uh, just pull a tight turn. There's there's the Sparrowhawk above me. And he took another shot at me and then swung back at me. And the Sparrowhawk is providing mutual support for the Betty. I did a little bit of damage. Um, I'm staying on his tail. But, you know, as usual, I'm going too fast. So I chop the power, roll on my back, try to give the tail gunner a chance. He, did, he doesn't do anything. But if you look out in front of me, the Sparrowhawk and the Betty are together again. Now, the Sparrowhawk is always helping that Betty. Uh, you don't normally see that type of mutual support in War Thunder. Um, ironically, I probably had, a, there were probably a couple of, of, of um, opportunities where I had a chance to get a shot at the bet, at the Sparrowhawk. But I became, and one of my problems with War Thunder is I'm often guilty of um, target fixation. But I was probably so fixated on trying to get the Betty that I, I never took, there's a Sparrowhawk. Now, I probably never took a crack at the Sparrowhawk, even though there were opportunities for me to do that. Like right there, I could have turned on them and nailed them. But I did There were a couple of chances for me to do that. But I was just so target fixated. I finally got him. Cut his wing off. You see him going down. You see the Sparrowhawk down there. And that Betty must have released his bombs towards the end. Now if you look in the lower left corner, you can see the Sparrowhawk making his escape. Uh, and I guess he went off and did, you know, bomber things. But um, in the end, he got away. Uh, but I was just so target fixated on that Betty, which I eventually got, that I um, I just never, I just never went that Sparrowhawk. But I probably should have. So, in this next uh, shootdown, we find ourselves over that map. I, I don't know the name of the map. It's the one with all the finger-like projections that I, I mentioned before. Um, the rock formations that should have like fingers. Um, I'm at a rather high altitude, uh, roaming around, again, looking for bombers. Um, and, you know, people are, like I said, this is back from January when people complain about the gear 2s, the bomb, the base rushing and all that stuff. And I, I just didn't see it. it. It just wasn't there. That said, I, I did find this J88. I took a, I took a crack at him. And, um, I gotta, I gotta tell you, it was a pretty well-flown airplane. I take a few shots at him, and um, as well forward as he is, I got I got to tell you, I'm I'm not flying all that well. My problem is that I'm um, not swinging out far enough. I swing out here. I swung out to starboard. I chopped the power. I swung back in, but. You know, I obviously hadn't gone to far enough. I went to pork. I swung back in again. Um, same problem. Um, I'm I'm not really flying out far enough to leave the target. And it's twice I've made that mistake. 
and perhaps it's because I'm just afraid of other people. I'm afraid of losing the target. I'm afraid of other people, you know, muscling in on the kill. Whatever, whatever my mistake may be. You know, but like, I finally get a few rounds in on them. I get some hits. Um, roll on my back, give the gunner, my tail gunner, a chance to take some hits. Or, I'm sorry, inflict some hits, I should say. Um, I swing around. Take a few shots at him. Chop the power. And I finally get him. And that's what it took to uh, to get that guy. Now, I'm the first to admit that I'm a lousy fighter pilot. And I'm, I'm slightly better as an interceptor pilot. Now, what you've been watching with a KF-45 is an interceptor move. Or they're all interceptor type missions. Now with a bowfighter, um, I'm even worse. Uh, but with a bowfighter, sometimes I can pull off a good interception. Which is what you're looking at. Um, I've zeroed in on a J88. And basically I'm strapping them with the cannons. And there you go. And that's it. Five bomber interceptions, five bomber shootdowns, two of them the dreaded J-88 snail bomber. If you've enjoyed this video, please light up that like button and subscribe.